Hello everyone, it's Sean, Mac here Gaming. So, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be reviewing the iPhone 5S from Apple. And hopefully you can see on the screen a um you can see the actual iPhone on the screen, hopefully. So problems. There are many. First of all, I'm gonna say that um when there are lots of um uh, when the status bar is lit up and not transparent, you see the one above the stock to say there's an update or such and such. It normally gets half broken off so it's not in line with the operating system. But first of all, let's talk about the hardware and let's get to the hardware uh, software after because there will be a big section on that probably. The hardware. Okay. A7 chip. 64-bit. Amazing. No doubt about it. It can be um, quad calls, uh, quad call Android phones out of the water easily, thanks to the lack of different devices on iOS, which means Apple and Apple can fine tune iOS so games run better on it. Whereas on the Android side of the um, grass or pond, I don't know what the right term would be actually. Um, on the on Android side, they have many, many, many devices, and Android cannot be fine tuned for the games for all the different devices. We're hence, why the iOS slash iPhone combo performs just as well as a quad core at the moment. So that's good. Um, the GPU built in is okay. Nothing more to say. The RAM. Random access memory is quite appalling to be honest though. It's only one gigabyte RAM still. I mean, really, this day and age with one gigabyte one gigabyte RAM on iPhone still? That's very disappointing, but I didn't realise it was that bad until I actually I got it. Because not much news was out about the specs and stuff. Um the same time I got it. Only a couple of days after or like a day after I think it was actually they got released properly. So that's a bit appalling. What what does this mean to you guys? Um, it means you can't multitask as great. And there are limitations on apps. For example, games can only use a maximum amount of RAM. For example, there'd probably be about 700 megabytes, 600 megabytes worth of RAM left after your iOS overhead. overhead. So um, that that basically means you won't see fancy games until there's more than one gigabyte RAM because it's hard to swap or like use all the RAM up. Well, it's easy to use all the RAM up. It's too easy. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm tr I'm getting it all muddled up here, guys. Sorry about this. I do know. But um, then there's the storage. We're still at 16 gigabyte 32, 64. I thought I would have swapped it to 32, 64, etc. For now, but that's not a big problem. Still not a big problem. Um, so yeah, the hardware, the process is good, everything else, not so. So will it play all the latest games? Of course it will. Even the iPhone 4S probably would. The 5 probably would. Will we see games that will make good use of all this stuff, like the processor? <sighs> probably, there will be probably games that could make use of it. But then again, they could be limited again, like I said. So the hardware, okay. Then <coughs> there's a Touch ID down here, as you can see. Well, on first thoughts, boots or cold boots or hard boots, whatever you want to call them. When you boot your phone up, you cannot use it. You have to type in your PIN all the time for the first boot. But after that, you can use it. However, there are glitches. For example, sometimes you can turn it off, <coughs> and you do that, and it doesn't detect it at all, and you have to type your PIN in anyway. But there's a secondary glitch to this. When you activate the lock screen by your Touch ID, you can't type on the keypad that well. Because you'd have to type like five times to get each number, which is a big glitch. So, really bad. But that's the software side, which we're talking about now. Next section iOS 7. Ooh, man. iOS 7, eh? Well, I want to tell you guys something. I've always had an iPhone from the beginning. 
I've had the first iPhone, all of them. And well, iOS 7 looks different and it's got some awesome functions like this is better than swiping to the left for example. But iOS 7 is what's really turned me off from Apple products at the moment because it's so laggy, there's so many problems. Even though this is an iPhone 5S, it feels slower than my 4S which had iOS 6 on. It feels much slower to be honest, it really does. Even some games like Real Racing 3, it just doesn't have that effect that iPhone 4S did for me. So I've been really let down by iOS 7, it's really killed this phone's performance. There are other problems for example, if you go to music, and you can obviously shuffle all songs, that's no problem. You can go to an artist and shuffle that artist. But genres, just say, oh I fancy, I don't know, some hip hop for change. Look, you can't shuffle the hip hop at all, you have to go to each separate album to do that. Which, oh yeah, that's another glitch. I'm tapping genres, you see that, wait a minute, I'll have to show you guys. Let's go to pop. Look. Genre. Genres. See how many times I'm tapping it? How is that acceptable? That's not acceptable. I tapped it like six times. And it's not just the music this does this. Other stuff too. There are other apps. Pretty much most of them. And this is a thought of iOS 7. Right, I've got no screen protector on at all, so don't even talk about the screen protector being the cause. Aha, you see the stats bar with the one notification? Sure, it's a small thing, but that small thing happens across board. This iOS 7 is dreadful. And the worst thing is, you can't downgrade it to 6 because it's an iPhone 5S. And the thing is, there has been updates, I'm on the latest update so far, oh actually that's the lie because there is another one there, but it's a minor one from what I read. So there are so many problems. So I watched the iTunes, uh, not iTunes, what am I on about, the Apple event from iTunes, that's what I was meant to say, and I saw the iPad Air release and I thought wow that looks pretty impressive, it's a bit smaller, lighter, and all that malarkey, it's faster. 64 bit processor, so it's pretty much the iPad equivalent of the iPhone 5S in a way. Then that clicked in my head oh no, it's going to be like the iPhone 5S but in the iPad form. And sure, I'm just gonna turn my phone off. Oh, yes, that's another thing I want to say about battery life. Oof. Don't ask me, the iPhone 4S would last ages. This I charge every night near enough. And I've disabled some features even though I didn't on 4S. But there we go. Anyway, the iPad Air. So, even though it's lighter and thinner, I've just, because of iOS 7, it's just killed me off from the iOS devices. So, even though this is a new phone, they're like, oh yeah, I've got, I'll show you the colour just in case you guys didn't notice. Slate. And um, slate grey, and or space grey, I think they called it, or something silly like that. So um, the thing is, I've been so put off by the iOS devices that <coughs> I am literally going to switch. Well, the first thing I'm going to move is my tablet because that needs to update the most. So I'm going to be moving away from Apple iOS iPads. like this fellow here, even though it's served me really well and I have to use it all the time, but the catastrophe that is iOS is making me move to Android, believe it or not. So the first thing is, when I get an upgrade for, well, I'm upgrading this now, my partner's getting this for Christmas because she really wants an iPad and I know I could sell this for a fair amount because it's a 32 gigabyte one. I think it's about four or five hundred. I think I've seen them for some time second hand, but I'm just gonna give that to her because she's always wanted one. And you know, it's, it's, don't be selfish. You gotta be nice and treat people sometimes. You know, so um, that's that little rant over with. 
because I know a lot of people out there don't treat their partners or treat anyone right and they don't really share or give stuff they just get stuff for themselves so yes back on to what I was saying sorry about that um, the iPad is bye bye I'm gonna get an Android and I've eyed up a few and the next update would probably be the Nexus Galaxy no, no, not Nexus Galaxy. What am I on about? Galaxy Note 10.1 2004 edition. Because it's got a bloody awesome processor 1.9 gigahertz octa-core processor, 3 gigabytes worth of RAM, 3 times the amount of them, which will be coming in use because I'm actually going to use it properly for multitasking. And an OK graphics um, processor, which would be useful too. So. That's my first step, moving away from iOS. Next step would be, I don't see how I can get on with this thing for two years. I really can't see how I'm going to do that. So I'm probably going to sell this probably in a couple of months time and move to an Android mobile too. I'm not sure which one yet because there's so many to choose from. But with the extra premium price in this, I could easily sell it and easily get a new one, a new Android, and still have some money left over, probably. So, there we go, I'm switching to Android. Don't touch the iPhone 5S with a barge bowl, unless you're a gigantic fanboy. I thought I was a bit of a Apple fanboy to begin with, but not much of a fanboy enough to stick with their products, even if they start sucking. So... That's my review, that's my opinion. Take it how you want to take it. Thank you for watching and see you later.